It's winter in Corsica, a place nicknamed the Island of Beauty. In the village of Piana, the brooch season has begun. Antoine will spend six months making this traditional cheese. It's the same technique as the olden days. The milk's still warm, you can see the steam. This is how it was done in the past. What do you like about living here? everything. The animals, the freedom, the countryside. We're our own boss and there's nothing to bother us. Once his 100 goats are freed from their pen, this shepherd becomes a master cheesemaker. To prepare his brooch, Antoine follows a very specific recipe. His pot is always heated over a fire made from heather and rock rose. Could you not use a stove? No. It would be quicker, but I couldn't. The cheese wouldn't taste the same. It's better this way. The way is heated to a temperature of 45 degrees. Before Antoine adds some fresh milk, the all-important emulsion then appears. Now we're going to separate the fire so that the heat is spread evenly on both sides of the pot. It shouldn't burn the cheese as it forms. And how do you know it's reached 45 degrees? You put your hand in it. When it stings and turns red, it's ready. Is it better than a thermometer? It works better, yes. Now I remove all the impurities that have risen to the surface, like the bits of ash from the fire, and the cheese is ready. With the help of his cousin Sauveur, Antoine carefully ladles the cheese into these strainers, which he's made from wicker. The steaming cheese is drained for just a few minutes. We head now to the centre of the village and to the kitchen in the family's tavern. Five kilograms. Five kilos this morning. We're going to make some brooch pastries. They're grandma's recipe. We've already prepared the filling. It's this sweet cheese here. We then roll out the dough, close up the pastries and cook them. This long beep of a horn is also a tradition in these parts. It heralds the arrival of the peninsula's last traveling butcher. We have to be careful. For 34 years, Jean Charles has gone up and down these treacherous roads. My predecessor fell down there. It's all part of the job. It's a bit dangerous. See how narrow it is? As soon as he opens, Jean-Charles warms up his audience. 33. All the threes. I've got some flank steaks. OK, I'll take two. I know how to pull them in. He teases people. He knows that I love flank steak and that my grandson does too. People call me Mr. Iron Fist because I like to lean on the scales to make more money. So I chat away and I say, how are things, Henri? Two steaks, two and a quarter kilos. The customer never realizes and they keep coming back. And they're happy. Over the years, Jean Charles has earned the trust of local residents. He's been around for 40 years. He's not just a butcher, he's more of a confidant and a friend. Like the other tradesmen who crisscross the island at this time of year, Jean Charles is essential to these remote communities. He's the only one who comes to our village now. 
Before the last one left, it was the baker. And before, there used to be a fruit and vegetable seller. And there was even a fishmonger. I brought you this. To thank their butcher, the villagers shower him with treats. And it's hard to say no. Well, it's like that every day. People give me stuff. I can't lose weight. I've tried. My wife has put me on a diet, but it doesn't work because every day someone brings me sweets or chocolate. Happy as Larry, this butcher is far from ready to hang up his apron. Will you retire tomorrow? Retire from what? Retiring would be just terrible for me. I'm sure I'd be depressed. I'm happy to keep doing my rounds. It's not a problem for me at all.